Hello everybody, my name is Cornelia. Today we will talk about smoke sensor, that's the second part of the subject. If you haven't seen the first one, please do it right now. I gave you some several basic information about the device, so I think it's good for you to know. But today, as I promised, I will talk about installation tips and tricks, uh, maybe not tips and tricks, but even requirements, what you need to do to make it work correctly. Uh, we will pair it with the gateway, which is on my left, that's UB Home Center. Um, we will configure the device and then I will try to explain you some parameters, including alarm frames, which can be sent to other devices. So you need to be with us. All right, so let's talk about uh, the installation. Um, what smoke sensor doesn't really like is light sources, places prone to drafts, Third is air conditioners, so it has to be installed um, at least one and a half meter from air conditioners, okay? It doesn't also like the dust, so be careful because it can be, um, it can send some false alarms. You can also clear uh, the device using the compressed air, okay? That's one of the tip. If it sends false alarms, it can be dirty inside. The next thing are high furnitures. Sometimes, if it's um, covered by the furniture, it can also um, not detect uh, the fire. So provide in the room as many smoke sensors as it's supposed to have, because uh, we care about our security, right? Um, the next thing is um, the places with uh, frequent uh, temperature fluctuations. So, um, so that avoid the false alarms once again. The next, uh, the next thing that is very important to remember is the high water vapor condensation. So if you want to install it in a bathroom or in a kitchen, it's not really recommended because of the high um, water vapor condensation. Um, but of course, if the rooms, whereas the kitchen or the bathroom is big, you can obviously uh, try to install it far away from the gas stove or the induction hub. Um, so remember not to install it above um, these um, these machines, so gas stove and, and also the induction hub. Um, what else you need to remember about? Obviously there are a lot of requirements, uh, but the first thing is that if you hear this uh, false alarms that the device sends, uh, as I said before, make sure that it's not dirty inside. Usually that's the problem. So use the compressed air to clear um, to clean the device inside the second part is the battery so make sure that the battery is not discharged um, or try to change it and maybe the false alarms will um, will be not sending anymore uh, the last thing is the sensitivity of the um, device which i will show you how to change um, especially in places where as i said there is a lot of dust or uh, the drafts so give me a second and I will go to the web interface and I will show you how to change these parameters. So let's add the device to the gateway right now. Okay, so I'm going to define.fibara.com, checking my IP address of the gateway. Okay, I'm opening the gateway and after logging I go to settings, devices and of course I want to include uh, the device so I'm clicking plus. I will click three times on the button that's in front of the device and I'm waiting for the initialization process. As you can see, there is smoke sensor, heat detector and temperature sensor. So three devices in one. You can click on a first and rename it, then click next and rename the rest of the devices. Okay, now you can see that everything is configured correctly. Let's go to the parameters tab. As I said before, in the first parameter, so smoke sensor sensitivity, you can change the sensitivity 
uh, to smoke presents. There are three of them. The first one is high sensitivity, the second is medium, and third, low sensitivity. So adjust the level of the sensitivity to the place you are using the smoke sensor. Let's now go to the configuration of control frames in basic command class. So which basic on frame value or basic off frame value, or maybe both, supposed to be enabled? The default setting is the zero value, so it's uh, basic on and basic off are enabled. But you can of course pick that you want to enable only the basic on. What are the basic on and off frames value? It can be sent, the frames can be sent, thanks for that parameter, to the devices after detecting the fire. So, for example, if we detect the fire, we would like to open the blinds, okay? As you can see, we have three possibilities. The zero is turn off the device. Um, we can also set uh, the value and also set the last status. Obviously, you can turn off the device. For example, if you want to turn off some boiler um, or anything that can cause, like the gas stove, that can cause the fire, you can do that right here. So what will happen after the fire alarm will be detected? The same with the next parameter, so basic off frame, and it's sent in case of fire alarm cancellation. So what happens in case the fire alarm, the fire alarm is over? The next parameter is very interesting, is uh, the fact that you can set the temperature report hysteresis, okay? Uh, so you can um, check the difference uh, between reporting uh, and real um, temperature. And also the temperature threshold. So that's a very important thing because sometimes the clients are setting too low value, that's why it reports the alarm very frequently. All right, so that's all I wanted to tell you about the smoke sensor. Please, if you haven't seen the first part of the subject, go to the first episode and see uh, some basic information about the smoke sensor. In the next episode, I will uh, ask you about some questions that I will be able to answer. Also, please send me some doubts or some problems and I will try to find a solution. So I'm waiting for you guys. See ya. Thank you.